Holy fuck. It is 80 degrees outside today. Hate that. Hate every single minute of that. I'm going to get sunburned in like five minutes, so I really can't stay out here for that long. But I needed to get my trusty bake shop. I feel like I'm here in every single one of my videos lately, but that's the truth. I am here every single fucking day. <laughs> so had a photo shoot on Monday for something very exciting that I think you guys are going to be so stoked on. I'm so stoked on it. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but just know that a lot of you have been asking for it. That's all I'm going to say. I saw the weather telling me that it was going to be 80 and I was like, Psh. yeah, I can have fun outside. And then I got outside and I was like, how come there's nobody outside? It's like, because it's fucking 80. 80 degrees is not a fun temperature. And if anybody knows that, it's me. I hate anything above 70 degrees. So I don't know what the fuck I thought today was going to be. Anyways, not to bitch and moan in the first 60 seconds of the video. Christ, Maddie, well, think of something positive to say. <laughs> Another thought that's on the top of my head this morning. Put on this girlfriend set, got ready to leave the house, and was just looking in the mirror thinking about how stupid it is that people ever gave a shit about seeing like underwear lines in leggings and like sports gear i'm sorry gun to my head you could not get me to wear a thong i'm sorry <laughs> i'm not wearing that shit i don't know i just looked at myself in the mirror before i left and obviously you can see my underwear lines whenever i wear sets like these because i refuse to wear a thong and I was just thinking to myself, like, why does anybody care? Why were we ever taught to give a shit about that? Because I just remember in middle and high school, people being so fucking stressed out about people being able to see your underwear lines. And it's like, yeah, yeah, of course you can see them. I am wearing underwear. Aren't you glad that I'm wearing underwear? I don't know. Also, why do you give a shit? Stop looking at me. <laughs> I don't know. It just feels weird to me to be like, wearing leggings and then on top of that having to hide the fact that you're wearing underwear because for whatever reason people decided that they don't want to see the lines when you wear skin tight clothing and I just don't care sorry I don't I'm gonna continue wearing comfortable underwear and my workout sets at the same time sorry Isn't this just the cutest pillow ever? I got it at that store. Absolutely did not need it. Had no reason to buy anything, but I bought that. And then I also bought this vase. I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> I did like a big apartment clean out the other day. And the biggest part of the apartment clean out was my closet and like going through and reorganizing everything and getting rid of the stuff that I don't want. And as I was cleaning, I was like, I just wanna redo my entire bedroom so badly. So I think that's next on my to-do list. So anyways, until I actually redo my entire bedroom, I've just been like really wanting to buy more little unnecessary things like this. But how freaking cute is that? Come on, come on though. All right, before I really get into all the stuff that I wanted to talk about in today's vlog, let's talk about our sponsor, our friends over at Favor, previously known as The Pill Club. Favor offers professionally prescribed birth control subscriptions as well as sexual wellness products delivered straight to your door for free. They carry over 120 different FDA approved brands. They ship to all 50 states and most forms of birth control are free with insurance or Medicaid. And if you don't have either of those, it starts at as low as $7 a month. I feel like I've talked quite a bit on my channel about my experience with birth control and how back and forth and complicated and frustrating my relationship with birth control has been. When I first started birth control as a teenager, I was on the pill, then I switched to an IUD, which was like the worst decision ever. I know people love IUDs, really didn't work for me. After that, I was on the NuvaRing for a few years, which I did really love. And then I eventually ended up switching back to the pill like a year and a half ago, two years ago. I don't know time anymore. <laughs> and I really enjoy it. This is probably the easiest that birth control has felt the entire time that I have been on birth control. Obviously the choice to be on birth control is totally personal, totally up to you. I started taking birth control for my periods, but now I take it because I don't want children. 
<laughs> and Favor delivers birth control straight to your door for free in discreet packaging. So if you don't want other people to know you're on birth control, that's totally fine. Again, it's a personal choice, personal decision. It's really nobody else's business besides your own. So no one will ever know. Right now, when you go to heyfavor.com slash party like Maddie, they are offering a $10 donation towards bedsider.org for every subscriber of mine that ends up becoming a patient. And that donation will go towards helping low income individuals gain access to birth control. That's heyfavor.com slash party like Maddie to get your first birth control care package and donate $10 to bedsider.org. Again, that's heyfavor.com slash party like Maddie and be sure to use that exact link if you want your donation to go through. I got the most vile message on a dating app the other day that I tweeted about and somehow it got put on incel Twitter like three days after I tweeted it and I had to deal with getting DMs from a bunch of incels for a weekend which was so not fun but I have to show you guys the fucking message because it was so unhinged that I'm still thinking about it. I'll keep it short, sweet, and honest, can you hear the ice cream truck in the background? Kind of a weird ambiance we're creating. I'm gonna keep going, though. <laughs> I think you're adorable. I mean, you're really cute, and I like your vibe from what I see. I feel like you're my type, and I'm attracted to you, and would love to spend some time with you. But I don't wanna waste your time, or my own. I want a friends with benefits slash fuck buddy. I've been celibate since before the quarantine went through a bad breakup. Now that I'm in a good space, I'm horny AF. <laughs> And I just want to meet someone I can vibe with, have a few drinks, share a few laughs, chit chat with, sorry, <laughs> smoke weed if you partake, and fuck two to three times a week at your place. I can't host. <laughs> I'm sorry if this comes off rude. That's the last thing I want. I just want, like you're interested and attracted to me and open to it. I'd love to have fuck and explore pleasing you. I hope I'm your type and I hear from you. If not, I hope you don't feel offended and I'm sorry for wasting your time. I... Give me a release. <laughs> what got me, what totally threw me over the edge, I was sitting on my fucking couch cackling, is first of all, I'd love to have fuck and also, I'd like to fuck two to three times a week at your place. I can't host. Holy fuck. I want to be euthanized. So I tweeted a screenshot of it and just said, I'm done with dating apps forever. I can't do this anymore. And I had to read through messages upon messages of dudes off incel Twitter being like, uh, you're so ungrateful, fatty. Take what you can get. Uh, the. Just like, you know, standard awful person bullshit. And then there was a lot of people being like, this actually is a good message. He's being so honest and upfront. You women will complain about anything. What was the thing that somebody said? I thought it was so funny. Hold on, I was screenshotting all this shit and sending it to my friends because I was like, there's no way that real people think like this. But they do, they sure do. Yeah, somebody responded and it goes, I thought women wanted honesty and y'all wonder why men lie. <laughs> somebody else goes, telling women the truth helps no one. If she didn't ask, don't clarify and deal with the consequences as they come. You guys are sick and twisted. I'm like, do they not know that you can tell someone that you're looking for casual sex without being a fucking weirdo? For starters, we didn't even match on this dating app. That was his intro message to me, a woman that has not matched with him, who he does not know, who he hasn't even said hello to. And y'all think that's appropriate? Mm -mm. No, it is not. And I feel bad for whoever dates you, because what the fuck? I think a good rule of thumb is if you wouldn't walk up to a stranger on the street and say that, uh, probably don't do it on a dating app either. It would be weird if you came up to me as I'm sitting on the side of the road drinking my coffee and went like, I would like to have fuck two, three times a week at your house, I can't host. Excuse me? Like, I am a stranger to you. Don't forget it. Like, it's just weird to talk to a stranger for the first time and have a list of demands. Yeah, I'd like to have fuck two, three times a week at your place. Any other demands that you want? You want me to have a home-cooked meal for you when you come over? What do I get in this exchange? <laughs> I feel like that's the equivalent of catcalling someone, and then when someone gets offended, being like, I thought women wanted honesty. Oh, my camera died, and then I went up to see if I brought another battery up to the roof with me, and my fucking tin of chips blew over.
anyways i just think it's incredible the lengths people will go to try to justify being a weirdo i also want to know if that's ever worked on anybody because i just can't imagine any woman reading a message that insane and being like yeah down even if i was down to hook up i wouldn't say yes to that you know not to mention that it says right on my profile that i don't hook up in two different places <laughs> I thought that was absolutely wild though. Like the message itself was wild enough. I was sending it to all my friends. I was like, this is so funny. Okay, let's post it on Twitter. Cause this is so funny. All the girlies are gonna laugh with me. Let's have a good laugh. And then the incels got it. And I had to listen to men give me think pieces on why it's okay to speak to women that you don't know like that. Hello? Somebody was like, imagine you're in a 25 year marriage. Okay, uh, but we're not. <laughs> stranger that is a stranger who looked at me for the first time had no indication that i liked him back and was like i want to have fuck two three times a week at your house can't host and i'm supposed to think that's hot i thought women wanted honesty shut up <laughs> so dating yeah all in all i stand by what i have been saying which is that uh, dating feels a lot easier and more fun this time around. I feel like I've been having a good time. I've been meeting good people. Has anything worked out? No. <laughs> I mean, we're all caught up. You guys know my life, what things have been like. And also, if you date in New York City, you get it. I feel like I consume more and more content online about dating in New York City, and I realize that it's like a special kind of hell here. Don't know why, but it is a special kind of hell. Even with all of the negative sides of it, I am still relentlessly optimistic all the time. Just cause I'm like, there's 8 million people that live here. You can't all suck. And the ones that don't suck are already in a relationship. There just has to be, you have to be out there. <laughs> Now, for a while, I've always been in the camp of people that's like, we're all on dating apps. You know, like if you're single in New York, you are on the apps. So it doesn't really matter if you meet someone in person or on the apps, because everyone that you could meet in person, randomly, have your little meet cute moment, those people are also on the apps. I've always said that. I gotta be real, guys. I'm starting to doubt if those people are on the apps. <laughs> I've been really considering going to a speed dating event, trying more traditional ways of dating just to see if it's like, no, it's just miserable everywhere all the time, no matter what method you choose. Or if there's just like a stench that is directly correlated to dating apps that I can't seem to get past because we're just incompatible objectively, me and crowd the dating apps attract. Who knows? That said, all of the dates that I've gone on this year have been pretty great. I haven't had any beef with any of the people that I've gone out with. It's just like the monotony of swiping and realizing that there's like so few that I'm actually into. <laughs> and it's like so exhausting to do the swiping over and over again on a loop and you meet someone and things are going well until they aren't and then you're like, oh, okay, let's do it all over again. It's just the repetition of it is a little exhausting. I won't go into the details because I don't need to, but this is funny because it's awful and I need to tell you guys. It's just sometimes things happen and I'm like, I'm being punked. Like I, I seriously wronged someone in a past life and I am being bullied. God is bullying me and I would like to talk about it. I was seeing this guy and things were going really well. No immediate red flags. I really liked him. The universe said, hmm, things are going really good for Maddie. What if we made this one move out of New York City for his job? Ooh, what if we did? What if we did that? And I, I was like, hmm, yeah, that checks out. That <laughs> checks out, that does check out. Checks right out. Obviously that sucks. It's nobody's fault. Like life happens. I just wish that life wouldn't happen to me, you know? All right, I'm going to dinner with my friend Abby and I kind of want to style these shoes. I've been doing quite, quite a bit 
of summer, spring, warm weather shopping. I want to at least attempt to like create a summer wardrobe. So here are some pieces that I bought from the new Ray collection that launched. Feeling excited about those. I also bought three pairs of the Big Bud Press work shorts and I am on the hunt for mini skirts. Getting dressed when it's hot out is just so difficult and confusing to me. I never know what the fuck to wear. I hate all of the outfits. So my mission this summer is going to be to try to force myself to figure out how to enjoy summer fashion because I just can't. I'm sorry, it's so boring. Ready for dinner though. <laughs> I guess I'm wearing this. 